Um, and uh, we're answering questions, or I'm answering questions that come in uh, over uh, the uh, the internet. And uh, one question was, "What is my favorite book?" And the answer to that question, I think, is um, well, I like Remembrance of Things Past a lot, but I think my favorite book is um, the annotated Alice. Uh, the first two Alice books annotated by, um, I can't remember if his name is Marvin Gardner or Martin Gardner. I think it's Martin Gardner. Um, and that's the answer to that question. Uh, another question was, um, uh, do I play a musical instrument? And yes, I play the piano uh, at uh, uh, in, di in different level of quality. Um, any more questions? Yes, another question. What do you do in LA for fun? Uh, I like to go for a walk, and I like to uh, go for a bike ride, and um, really the weather is quite nice in L.A. compared to my native Brooklyn, so anytime, like in February, you can just go for a walk, uh, dressed as I am now, uh, in a t-shirt, it's really enjoyable, just to know that back in Brooklyn, you would be resenting your own existence. Another question, um, have you read Ender's Game, and if so, are you excited for the movie? I have read Ender's Game, and I saw a trailer for the movie a couple of nights ago before um, uh, Star Trek, and I am excited for the movie. It looks like it's going to be a good movie, um, and I wonder, I, I have only read the first two uh, books in the Ender's Game series. I've read uh, Ender's Game, and I've read uh, Speaker for the Dead. Uh, and they were both really good. Um, and I'm 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 pro I'm pro Orson Scott Card, and I'm pro them making movies out of his books. He seems to me quite good. Right. Another question: What is your drink of choice? Well, I like Pepsi Cola a lot, and uh, and if there's a scoop of ice cream and there's vanilla ice cream, that's that's the best. Um, you know, you can't drink that too much. It's unhealthy, um, but it's probably all other things being equal, if it's possible, that's probably the best drink. And Flu. Um, question from another viewer on Love Me Cat. How did Love Me Cat and Owie meet? Um, I, I Love Me Cat... Um, found a book of um, hermetic rituals in a, in a local uh, uh, library and, and perform certain physical um, dances to, to, to invoke his, his desire for a friend. And then that somehow changed the, the laws of the cosmos, and Owly, who was flying overhead, landed in front of Love Me Cat, and, and they became friends. What do you think would happen if Bronzo and Bender met? Uh, uh, I think they would dislike each other, because they're both rather selfish robots. Um, each of them would try to to connect to the other via a USB cable and and use the other one as a peripheral for himself. Um, so that would be a, a challenge um, as to who who's I mean Bender's operating system is more up to date since he's from the year three thousand, so so who knows if they were are even compatible. And how exactly will the virtual writer's room element of Love Me Cat work? Well, I think we'll do a Google Hangout, actually. Uh, either a Google Hangout or some kind of thing like... Um, I don't know if we'll need to use the, um, the video aspect, but um, if, uh, you know, however many people are in it, we'll just all get together digitally and people will say, Hey, how about you know? Love me, cat has a birthday party and he's in a party hat, and I'll be like, "That's a good idea. We'll do that." Or someone will say, "How about we do a whole episode of Love Me, Cat in 
in Tagalog, and I'll say, well, that'll be rough because I don't know Tagalog. Uh, how about some other language that I do know? So we'll have a back and forth um, like that. And what part of the Love Me Cat project excites you the most? Um, what excites me has been it's it's a kind of um, it's been pretty funny uh, in a kind of a loosey goosey improvisatory way, and like working with Andy and working with our guests, we've been able to to come up with ideas sort of from the moment uh, in a way that uh, is exciting and is different from my normal way of working, which is to kind of, um, you know, think about things ahead of time and commit them to a script. So, so like the opportunity of, of improvising is for me, uh, it's exciting. Um, that's the answer to that. And how did you get into puppetry? Uh, well, that's a that's a generous question because it assumes that I am into puppetry. Um, I just was looking for a way to have a persona um, that could communicate with people, um, and and puppetry like a kind of a fantastical persona, and puppetry seemed like a good way of doing it. I, I had considered doing a um, like a CG character, but I thought that that would be, and actually talking with Matt Danner, he said, and I agreed that that would be, um, you know, hinky, that there'd be too much of a, of a, a lag. You wouldn't have an organic timing between, uh, um, a, a CG character and a, and a live action character and puppetry seemed like the most organic, uh, way to have that, um, a fantasy character communicating with a real person in real time. What is your favorite episode of any show that you've ever written? Hmm. Well, I really like the God of Monkeys episode of Drinky Crow um, a great deal. Um, and I like Jurassic Bark and Hell is Other Robots on Futurama. So that's, uh, that's three answers. Three answers for the price of one answer. Other than cats, of course, what is your favorite animal? Oh, the human. I want the human. Um, fairy shrimp. That's also a good one. Um, pangolin. Another three-way tie. Human, fairy shrimp, and pangolin. Have you, I, uh, since Love Me Cat, is a Kickstarter. Uh, this one is, what kind of Kickstarters have you backed yourself? I backed a magazine that my niece, Rebecca Kaplan, was doing uh, at her college. Um, I think it was a combination of um, essays and short stories. Um, next question. Um, did the science in the Big Bang Theory intimidate you as a writer? Was it hard to work into your writing? No, no, it did not intimidate me as a writer. I'm, I'm tough to intimidate as a writer. Um, uh, you know, because, because I grew up around people who were interested in science. And I went to graduate school in analytic philosophy, which is full of people who are kind of similar in personality structure to scientists. Um, and I sort of approach things from an emotional standpoint. So, so for my way of thinking as a writer, if someone is trying to develop a, a, a kind of tin, that will work in, will, will remain flexible in very low temperatures. I don't really need to understand anything about tin. Uh, I just need to know what it's like to want to do something and have difficulty doing it and worry that other people might do it first or worry that, you know, you'll never, you know, how late should you stay up and it'll affect your relationships if you're getting too involved in this tin thing. So uh, then I can just, 
look on Wikipedia or talk to David Salzberg about the actual details of, of the, the science of low temperature tin. Um, but it's the writing is more about a person who's trying to do something and how that affects his or her self-conception and relationships and it's so much a meditation on on tin. Do you, do you enjoy working on an animated show and was it how was it different from sitcom writing? Um, well I like animation. I actually have an animation studio called Marari Films. Uh, it's, it's different because you have control over more aspects of the production. Like if you have cast a character in a sitcom, you can't say, I would like their, their face to be longer. No actor is going to sit still for the plastic surgery that would be necessary to lengthen their face. But in animation, you can, and you, if they're sitting on a set, you're designing the set, and you're designing every thing. And what it, I mean, you design a set in sitcoms, but you're kind of picking cups from the universe of all cups that have already been made. But if you're doing it in animation, you're designing the cups from from scratch. Um, and more practically, um, uh, there are many more jokes per minute in animation. How did you get your start? Uh, I'm interpreting that question as how did I get my start professionally, not biologically. Um, I, I wrote for uh, the Harvard Lampoon and Spy Magazine in college. And then when it seemed like I wanted to give TV writing a shot, um, I got um, Steve Young, who was an old friend of mine, uh, who was a writer on The Late Show, to read my stuff and give me some advice. And I got advice from other people, too. I got advice from, from Dan Graney and uh, Donna Carey and, and other, other friends, of, friends of theirs. And uh, I, 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 um, I got a, some job offers, which I couldn't take because I was still a TA for philosophy of language for John Searle up at Berkeley. But then ultimately I got a job at uh, Late Show with David Letterman in New York. And I, I took that job and worked there for about a year and a half. And then with that credit, I was able to move out to Los Angeles and apply for other jobs and ultimately got one at Futurama. Okay. Um, how much of Futurama was planned from the beginning? Chelsea, do you think I should be looking someplace different? How do people do Google Hangouts? I think looking right at the camera. Uh, but am I looking at the camera or am I looking at them? Can you tell? Are you looking at it? Are you looking? I am watching the YouTube and you look I'm looking great. straight ahead? Okay, yeah. good. How are you doing, son? Yeah, I'm just going to snag. Gonna, you want your, your phone? No, I, want, I want Finn's phone. Oh, you want Finn's phone? I want Finn's phone. Finn's phone. Yeah, Finn needs his phone. All right. Um... Oh, what was that? It was a question about whether Futurama was good or um, <laughs> how much? This is from Brohan Gutenberg. How much of Futurama was planned from the beginning? Uh, some. Um, th there were some uh, surprises in seasons four and five that were planned by David Cohen and Matt Groening. In in their conversations before anything was written, so so a, a good chunk, a good chunk, uh, was planned from the beginning. Um, okay, next question: Why a sphinx cap? Oh, um, I was having a conversation with my friend Ray Yao, who's a philosopher. Um, and and he likes cats and I like cats and and he's and he said you know why people like cats don't you and I was like no Ray why do people like cats and he said the fur that's the killer app of the cat is the fur and if it wasn't for the fur it would not be a very appealing animal to have in your house so I thought that would if that were true I don't know if it's true I remain agnostic on that fur question uh, it's 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 very poignant um, because if you were a cat that wanted everyone to love you but you had no fur you would be in a pickle um, 
and to me that always seems like um, kind of deep actually because we want people to love us for ourselves but then we always do extra stuff so people will love us for that like we try and learn to make jokes or or, or develop you know lustrous hair or, or, or fit bodies or something because we want people to love us for that or we want people to love us and if necessary, ideally for ourselves, but if necessary for any reason at all. So that's a love me cat is sort of like he wants to be loved, but he lacks the the killer app that cats use to get people to love them, which is fur. So that's why. All right. Um, have you ever thought about writing novels, or do you want to just stick to TV writing? Well, I just wrote a nonfiction book called Does Santa Exist? A Philosophical Investigation. Um, and I have thought about writing novels. Um, I've written some short stories in the past um, few months. Um, and if one of them seems like it lends itself to being a novel, I will write it as a novel. Um, I like to write a novel. I guess I was, maybe to some extent I was I was put off by the omniscient narrator, um, like the idea that there was somebody who would say, and then spring turned to summer and the father's bees gradually came to hate each other. Like I was found that in intimidating and kind of hard to wrap my head around the convention. Um, but, but I've been reading some novels and and I kind of, and so that's why what drew me to drama because I didn't have to have one voice that knew everything. I could just have a couple people hashing it out or several people hashing it out. But um, I, now I think I would just view that as another character. Um, so that's how I would approach it. And yes, I, I would like to write a novel. Sure, if, if people if people wanted to read said novel, that would be even better. But I would write one at some point. Why not? How did you come up with the idea for Love Me Cat? Uh, well, I've answered this question already in the question about fur. Um, I, I wanted to do something about a character who is very explicit about wanting people to love him and has some feature about him that makes it hard for people to love him. And, and I also thought that it kind of, it kind of, had an interesting connection with with the whole concept of YouTube and the whole concept of of um, using social media to get notice because uh, I think that is um, that's real like like it's not like a frothy fad I think it's a real aspect of human life that that we want people to pay attention to us and we want people to love us and that's how it's manifesting now is through YouTube. So, so those two things kind of seemed seemed worth uh, exploring to me. Now I'm worried that this is not funny enough, but I'm just answering it honestly. Who's your favorite Muppet? Kermit. Isn't he everyone's favorite Muppet? What a question. <laughs> uh, what other online shows are you into right now? I'm not into any online shows. I like Wikipedia, but that's not a show. I like to go on Wikipedia and be like, what was the Holy Roman Empire anyway? And then that'll be, or, you know, who, you know, Sapir Whorf hypothesis, but who was a Whorf anyway? I looked that up yesterday. And it's like he, was a, he was an engineer with no linguistic training. And, oh, that's interesting. Benjamin Whorf. So to me, it's, there's very little in the world of movies, TV, online entertainment or books that's more interesting than reading Wikipedia. Like to me that's just kind of like if I have free time I'll just look on Wikipedia for stuff. Okay, next question. Um, is Matt Groening the nicest or what? Groening. Matt Groening. I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. <laughs> um, he is the nicest, not what. I choose the first. He's the nicest. Um, could Alf be a guest on Love Me Cat if he promised not to eat him? Uh, yes. Sure. Um, what's that? Mr. Fusco is the over is the fonts at Origo of all things. Alf is the writer and creator and puppeteer and so sure. 
I, I don't know. I've never, I'm not, I, I like Alf. I'm not, I'm not a, a Scoliast or, or Maven. So I haven't seen every episode of Alf. I don't know. Did he did he just long to eat cats, or did he actually eat them, any of them? Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Not well, well maybe story. someone maybe someone on the internet can help us out. Um, DJ Mystico has a follow up question to that one. What would Love Me Cat do if Alf tried to eat him? Oh, oh, was... claw, claw, bite. The claw, claw, bite routine from the Red Dragon, from the Monster Manual. Um, um, here's the next question. I am allergic to cats. Would I be allergic to the Love Me Cat puppet? Uh, yes. Yes, you would, because um, when people are allergic to cats, they are somehow allergic to the cat's some protein in the cat's saliva, not the cat's fur. Is my understanding. It's a, if there's an allergist out there and I'm wrong, correct me, but that's my understanding. I'm just a, I learned my, my immunology on the street. I have no formal training as an immunologist, but that's my, my gut answer. And um, Kaylee would like to know, how are you? I'm good, Kaylee. How are you? Um, next question. Um, who would be your dream guest for Love Me Cat to meet? Oh, that is an interesting question. John Cleese. Oh, no, no, no. I take it back. Terry Jones. John Cleese, close second, but Terry Jones. Because I want to ask him. He wrote this book about... Um, that the barbarians got a bad rap and he wrote some books about the middle ages and he has some pretty profound meditations about what life was like in the middle ages so we could talk about profound meditations about life in different historical and sociological backgrounds and comedy so what is that's that's not a dream guest you tell me what a dream guest is i think it's that um, to answer your ALF question earlier, DJ Mystico weighed in, um, cats were a traditional meal on his home planet. That's interesting. Why did they have the same, why did they have an Earth species? What's, the, what's his name for this planet? has some, has some funny name. Maldus, Maldusclab? Algabab? Um, Melmac? Melmac, Melmac. Was that his name? Is he from Melmac or is that his name? I think he's from... He's from Melmac. Okay. So why would an Earth species be on Melmac? I wonder if it was not like something like a cat, but that tasted better. I don't know. I, these, are deep, these are deep questions. Um, next question. Let's see. Have you found a philosophy that you abide by, or are you searching for one? Hmm. I'm not searching for a philosophy. Um, so I guess that means I found one that I abide by. Yeah, interesting question. And if you could live in any fictional universe, hmm. which would it be? Well, most fictional universes are pretty bad um, because people accentuate the more dramatic aspects of ours and make them worse. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. It's a hard, it's a hard question. Too, too hard. Who does Love Me Cat prefer? Paul, John, George, or Ringo? Oh, equally. Likes them all equally. And as a follow-up to your Wikipedia comments earlier, do you ever edit things on Wikipedia? Yeah. I did edit something. Um, I edited something about the Book of Job. 
and, I, and its relationship to the Terrence Malick movie, The Tree of Life. Um, I think I think I'm put in in the entry on the Book of Job that the Tree of Life is is kind of a modern retelling of the Book of Job. I think that's right, but it's possible that I put in an entry in the Tree of Life that it was it was something to do with the relationship between the Tree of Life and, and, and uh, the Book of Job. Uh, what do you think the Middle Ages were like? Um, well, they were horrible. Um, the possibility of, of you or your family getting killed through violence or disease was much more present. Um, but I think there was a there was a, a corresponding um, there was greater joy when that wasn't happening um, because life was much more chaotic and people were also kind of more I think immersed in nature than we are now um, and and like simple things like spring coming were probably really um, they enjoyed them a lot they weren't currently like being tortured by the local lord or dying of the plague or something like that. That's, that's my guess. Do you read comic books and have you thought about writing them and do you have a favorite that you read? Well yeah, I would love to write a comic book and I have thought about writing one. And the last comic book that I really liked was Promethea by Alan Moore. I thought that was just, you know, he did a bang up job. That's quite quite good. I was on an Alan Moore uh, uh, binge recently and I read From Hell which is really good and I read um, something else, something good, and, uh, and Promethea because uh, um, I think Todd Hansen, the Onion writer, recommended it um, and it was it was really good. You know, I had some quite um, uh, effective uh, Cruise de theater, if that's pronounced correctly. Do you think if the Futurama gang adopted Love Me Cat, they'd get along? It, I don't I, this, I get. I assume the Futurama gang means the writers. Um, sure. I don't know why they're they're a, a, a live and let live gang. I mean, they're not really even a gang. I think of a gang as be more uh, illicit. Have you met Brian Cranston? Yeah, yeah, I used to work with Brian Cranston. I was a writer for Malcolm in the Middle. Um, he, he's a great guy. He, Brian Cranston is, is terrific. Pro attitude towards Brian Cranston. If, you, if you're going to attack Brian Cranston, I'll defend him. What advice would you give to aspiring writers? Okay, uh, this came up on the Reddit AMA, so I'm prepared for this. Um, I think um, keep reading stuff that you think is really good and trying to write stuff that is that, as good as that. In other words, keep working on being a good writer and, and enjoying it and finding ways to make it fun. And, and if you are too self-critical, stop being so self-critical. And uh, there's a good book called The Artist's Way that can help you not be so self-critical. Uh, and then find friends who can give you honest feedback and, and trade your honest feedback for their honest feedback. Uh, that is the advice I would give. Okay. Um, next question. What's something that you learned in the writer's room? Oh, uh, something I learned in the writer's room is it's better to have a really simple story that's good <clears throat> than a complicated story that's bad. Uh, and I know that sounds obvious to put it that way, but um, I've just learned to to kind of make stories as uncomplicated as they possibly can be, or I've learned to try to do that. So that's something I've learned. If that was the intent of the question, I don't know if it was like, oh, did you learn, you know, 
some interesting bit of trivia about your fellow writers, and I did, but you know, that's I'm not going to share that it's with the uh, uh, violating confidentiality of the writers. Who's your favorite puppet other than Love Me Cat? Kermit. Kermit the Frog. What non-Pixar DreamWorks animated movie have you liked recently? Huh. <laughs> not, oh, oh, I see. It's not, not, it's neither Pixar nor DreamWorks. Oh, okay. Animated movie. Um, well, um, I liked uh, Ponyo a lot. Uh, she's uh, she's a little fishy from the sea, but she's also a little girl with a round tummy, and it's a beautiful. Uh, the Paleozoic Oceans return to modern day Japan is really gorgeous. So I like Ponyo. Do you steal ideas from your real life for shows like Big Bang Theory and Malcolm in the Middle? Well, if they're from my real life, they're not. It's not stealing, because because they're mine. Um, it's an interesting question. If if it's something that happens to me and somebody else, is it stealing? And I would say no. If it's if I was in it, it's mine, and it's I'm allowed to use it. But I use it for sure, for sure. Things that happen in my real life show up in stuff that I write all the time, in more or less disguised form. Okay, question from Kaylee. If Love Me Cat could have three wishes, what would they be? Fur. To have people love him. And to have the strength to love them. Okay, and I think this will be our last question. Okay. Um, let's see. Describe Love Me Cat's dream companion. Oh. Uh, a, a, a being who finds Love me, cat. A joy, joyful. Who uh, just finds love me, cat himself, a door into a world of limitless joyful possibilities, and who herself is a door into a world of limitless joyful possibilities, ever fresh and new for him. That, that is how I would. Okay, end broadcast. Should I click end broadcast? Yeah, don't forget to support. Love me. Oh yeah, don't forget to support Love Me Cat on the Kickstarter. Um, this is key uh, because if you go to the Kickstarter and you support it in the next three hours, you will be part of the Love Me Cat generation, uh, and you'll be part of the team creating Love Me Cat. And and if you don't, you won't. So do. <laughs>